General Feller was young for his rank, but his hands and his face were those of a man who had spent his life not in drawing-rooms, but in the field, hardened and sword-calloused and leathery with sun. His moustaches and his queue were trimmed to an efficient length. His pistol, belt, and swords, all of them showed heavy use. He led the way personally up through the silent ruins of the village, a small, creeping, terraced place, ancient and clinging to the mountainside, grey stone mortared to make the walls and steps of the narrow lanes that wound between the houses. The door of the largest house stood thrust open, and blood spattered the floor. The bodies had been removed. Lawrence followed Feller and his soldiers inside grimly and stood looking in the courtyard. Two dozen chests and more stacked upon one another to the height of a man's head. "'We followed a British dragon to this place,' Feller said coldly, "'bearing more such chests. The guilty culprits fled before our approaching forces, however, and left their allies to their destruction.' Lawrence looked at Hammond, who did not answer, but only stood in pallid silence. They went back out through the village. The attack had evidently come in the early hours before dawn, and the town had been brutally punished for its support of the rebels. Cattle and goods stripped, citizenry put to the sword. The streets echoed emptily beneath their boot heels, and the doors stood open, ruined. A poor mountain village, worth nothing to anyone but its citizens, and now all of those were dead. Lawrence could see the marks of talons and jaws where roofs had been ripped away, walls torn down, and through one gaping hole as he walked along the dusty, smooth, cobblestoned lane he saw a cradle, empty and overturned, blackened with smoke. Lawrence was not unused to blood nor to brutality. God knew he had seen more than enough men dead, falling corpses into the ocean or hacked apart with sabre and cannon fire, and yet when he stood looking over the empty and ruined village, his stomach twisted wrenchingly with disgust, a passionate horror. "'Was there more opium there?' Temere asked, from where he stood, nearly upon the outskirts of the village, leaning anxiously over the roofs. "'Yes,' Lawrence said shortly. Twenty thousand pounds worth, or near to it. A monstrous amount.' "'Oh,' Iskirka suddenly raised her head, "'is opium worth so much? I have never heard that before.' What do they mean to do with it now that they have taken it? Burn it, Lawrence said. That seems a great waste, she said in disgruntled tones. 